Epilogue to Adam Bede by George Eliot. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Tom Denham. It is near the end of June in 1807. The workshops have been shut up half an hour or more in Adam Bede's timber yard, which used to be Jonathan Burger's, and the mellow evening light is falling on the pleasant house with the buff walls and the soft grey thatch, very much as it did when we saw Adam bringing in the keys on that June evening nine years ago. There is a figure we know well just come out of the house, and shading her eyes with her hands as she looks for something in the distance, for the rays that fall on her white borderless cap and her pale auburn hair are very dazzling. But now she turns away from the sunlight and looks towards the door. We can see the sweet, pale face quite well now. It is scarcely at all altered, only a little fuller to correspond to her more matronly figure, which still seems light and active enough in the plain black dress. "'I see him, Seth,' Dinah said as she looked into the house. "'Let us go and meet him. Come, Lisbeth, come with mother.' The last call was answered immediately by a small, fair creature with pale auburn hair and grey eyes, little more than four years old, who ran out silently and put her hand into her mother's. "'Come, Uncle Seth,' said Dinah. "'Aye, aye, we're coming,' Seth answered from within, and presently appeared, stooping under the doorway, being taller than usual, by the black head of a sturdy two-year-old nephew, who had caused some delay by demanding to be carried on Uncle's shoulder. "'Better take him on thy arm, Seth,' said Dinah, looking fondly at the stout, black-eyed fellow. "'He's troublesome to thee so.' "'Nay, nay, and he likes a ride on my shoulder. I can carry him so for a bit.' A kindness which young Addy acknowledged by drumming his heels with promising force against Uncle Seth's chest. But to walk by Dinah's side and be tyrannised over by Dinah's and Adam's children was Uncle Seth's earthly happiness. "'Where didst see him?' asked Seth, as they walked on into the adjoining field. "'I can't catch sight of him anywhere.' "'Between the hedges by the roadside,' said Dinah, "'I saw his hat and his shoulder. There he is again.' "'Trust thee for catching sight of him, if he's anywhere to be seen,' said Seth, smiling. "'Thee't like poor mother used to be. She was always on the lookout for Adam, and could see him sooner than other folks, for all her eyes got dim.' "'He's been longer than he expected,' said Dinah, taking Arthur's watch from a small side-pocket and looking at it. "'It's nigh upon seven now.' "'Aye, they'd have a deal to say to one another,' said Seth, "'and the meeting would touch em both pretty close-ish. "'Why, it's getting on towards eight years since they parted.' "'Yes,' said Dinah, "'Adam was greatly moved this morning, "'at the thought of the change he should see in the poor young man, "'from the sickness he has undergone, "'as well as the years which have changed us all.' and the death of the poor wanderer, when she was coming back to us, has been sorrow upon sorrow. "'See, Addy,' said Seth, lowering the young one to his arm now, and pointing, "'There's father coming, at the far stile.' Dinah hastened her steps, and little Lisbeth ran on at her utmost speed till she clasped her father's leg. Adam patted her head and lifted her up to kiss her, but Dinah could see the marks of agitation on his face as she approached him, and he put her arm within his in silence. "'Well, youngster, must I take you?' he said, trying to smile, when Addy stretched out his arms. 
ready with the usual baseness of infancy to give up his uncle seth at once now there was some rarer patronage at hand it's cut me a good deal dinah adam said at last when they were walking on didst find him greatly altered said dinah why he's altered and yet not altered i should have known him anywhere but his colour's changed and he looks sadly however the doctors say he'll soon be set right in his own country air he's all sound in the inside it's only the fever shattered him so but he speaks just the same and smiles at me just as he did when he was a lad it's wonderful how he's always had just the same sort of look when he smiles i've never seen him smile poor young man said dinah but thee wilt see him smile to-morrow said adam he asked after thee the first thing when he began to come round and we could talk to one another i hope she isn't altered he said i remember her face so well i told him no adam continued looking fondly at the eyes that were turned towards his only a bit plumper as thee'dst a right to be after seven year i may come and see her to-morrow mayn't i he said i long to tell her how i've thought of her all these years didst tell him i'd always used the watch said dinah ay and we talked a deal about thee for he says he never saw a woman a bit like thee i shall turn methodist some day he said when she preaches out of doors and go to hear her and i said nay sir you can't do that for conference has forbid the women preaching and she's given it up all but talking to the people a bit in their houses ah said seth who could not repress a comment on this point and a sore pity it was a conference and if dinah had seen as i did we'd a left the wesleyans and joined a body that had put no bonds on christian liberty nay lad nay said adam she was right and thee was wrong there's no rule so wise but what it's a pity for somebody or other most of the women do more harm nor good with their preaching they've not got dinah's gift nor her spirit and she's seen that and she thought it right to set the example of submitting for she's not held from other sorts of teaching and i agree with her and approve of what she did seth was silent this was a standing subject of difference rarely alluded to and dinah wishing to quit it at once said didst remember adam to speak to colonel donnithorne the words my uncle and aunt entrusted to thee yes and he's going to the hall farm with mr irwine the day after to-morrow mr irwine came in while we were talking about it and he would have it as the colonel must see nobody but thee to-morrow he said and he's in the right of it as it'll be bad for him to have his feelings stirred with seeing many people one after another we must get you strong and hearty he said that's the first thing to be done arthur and then you shall have your own way but i shall keep you under your old tutor's thumb till then mr irwine's fine and joyful at having him home again adam was silent a little while and then said it was very cutting when we first saw one another he'd never heard about poor hetty till mr irwine met him in london for well, the letters missed him on his journey. The first thing he said to me, when we'd got hold of one another's hands, was, I could never do anything for her, Adam. She lived long enough for all the suffering, and I'd thought so of the time when I might do something for her. But you told me the truth when you said to me once, There's a sort of wrong that can never be made up for why there's mr and mrs poyser coming in at the yard gate said seth so there is said dinah run lisbeth run to meet aunt poyser 
Come in, Adam, and rest. It has been a hard day for thee. End of Epilogue Recording by Tom Denham End of Adam Bede by George Eliot